use a 3D printer? 3D I just printer? got this video idea. 3D printer. I 3D printed. Well, you 3D you printer. Can use your 3D printer to 3D print. 3D printer. Try 3D, 3D printing, printing a 3D printer. Use the 3D, 3D printer. 3D printer. 3D I think printer. you need a 3D printer. 3D printer. 3D printer. 3D printer. Now, 3D printer. Infinite supply. 3D printer. 3D printer. I'm gonna 3D print a 3D printer. Hmm. 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 Well, I, actually, I guess it's more like a console or like a TV stand or... Actually, it doesn't matter. Why am I talking about this? But more importantly, this is a 3D printer. This is my old printer, the one that started it all. I don't really use it too much anymore. I mostly use it to rest my foot every once in a while. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just don't use it that much anymore. And I need to use this one as an example because I'm using that one back there printing out all the movie ideas you guys have had pretty much nonstop for the last few weeks. I think I just have a few more things to print out and then we'll finally have that video done. But thank you all for all your suggestions. I, I, I like so many of them. I had, to, I had to print out a bunch of stuff. But back to the task at hand, believe it or not, 3D printers are actually pretty simple objects. Just like in our lives, they move in three dimensions. X, Y, and Z. There's a project called the RepRap project, which started in 2005, and their goal was to have machines that can basically self-replicate. And that project's still going strong. And one of the biggest 3D printer manufacturers, Prusa, actually 3D prints a lot of the parts for their own printers. Things have kind of changed in the last few years with Bamboo Lab kind of taking over and revolutionizing the space. That might be debatable. But there's still a lot of projects that go on, like Voron, you can pretty much print out everything. They're pretty expensive though. You'd think if you're printing out a lot of it yourself, they wouldn't be so pricey, but they get up there. <gasps> they, they do, they get up there. <laughs> I'm actually gonna be following this project on Maker World called Mossbot. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested, but I don't know if it's gonna be super easy. Actually, the easiest part is actually printing out the parts. They're gonna take about three hours to print everything, which is pretty insane. And then after that, I have a few problems I need to face. Number one, soldering. It can't be that hard, but I've never done it. I've watched tons and tons of videos over the last few years. You ever watch something that you're interested in, but you've never really tried it? That's me with a lot of stuff. And soldering is one of those things. But I have my soldering iron that's been staring at me for like the last few years, and I just got some soldering tin delivered today, so I, I should be ready to go. Number two, Chinese. I don't speak it. And that's what all these instructions are in. Well, at least the bill of materials. The instructions are actually in English. So I can't really use that as an excuse. But yeah, this parts list, um, I'm basically using Google Translate to, uh, to figure it out. They have a link to Taobao, but I, I don't know how to order from that. Uh, it doesn't work. You can kind of figure out what some of them is. Like for example, Ramps 1.4 Mega 2560. I just Googled that and I was able to find what it was. But beyond that, I, I might be in some trouble. We'll get it though, we'll figure it out. And then my third problem is as of recording this, Unnecessary Inventions just posted a video of him 3D printing a 3D printer literally less than 24 hours ago. And it was an amazing video. I've loved and watched his videos for a pretty long time. You know, I think we all kind of feel like we're not good enough or didn't do good enough and compare ourselves to others sometimes. But in this case, it's gonna be hard not to do that for me. There's also another guy, Alexander Schapel. I, I don't know if I said that right, but I love his videos too. And he actually 3D printed like a life-size 3D printer not too long ago. Maybe it was like a year or two ago at this point. I don't know. Time, time, is, time is just goes so fast these days. I'm going to like the complete other end of the scale because I'll be printing like pretty much the world's smallest 3D printer in the world. And he, he probably did one of the biggest. Luckily I have this box and it has everything I need in it. Well, well not yet, but it's going to have everything I need in it. As I gather up the parts and everything, I'm going to put them in here so I don't lose anything, keep everything organized. So I guess I better get started. I placed some Amazon orders and while I waited, I printed out the pieces I needed and put them in my green box. After that, the boxes really started piling up, but I ended up with 3mm linear rods, the Mega 2560 Arduino, which is going to be the brains of the operation, a NEMA 17 stepper motor that's going to drive the filament through the printer, my three linear stepper motors, which match the right dimensions specified, but spoiler alert, are going to give me a lot of trouble but what these do is move the x y and z pieces and then i had my ramps 1.4 board which is designed to plug into the arduino and is set up for all the wiring for the printer some micro switches which tell the printer when it's reached as far as it can go in any direction a cute little fan to keep everything cool some stepper motor drivers which tell the linear motors from earlier what to do and according to california some carcinogenic brass bushings finally here's the extruder hardware that will work with the nema 17 motor to feed the filament through the nozzle which just so happens to not be in my green box yet because i forgot to order it but being honest i'm probably missing some parts, but I guess I'm just gonna start putting it together and then we'll find out that way. So if I were to follow these instructions, which I am known to do, I would start out with securing the Y-axis lead screw motor using M 2x6 pointed screws. I do have some M 2x6 pointed screws here. Will this be a disaster? Let's see. Nope, I got it. All right, so M 2x6, I need... I don't know how many. And then I need one of these lead screw motors. This is actually good because I'll know if I bought the wrong part like within the first step. They use two screws, here I have three. Looks looks pretty similar though. I am gonna have to solder some wires to this. 
Actually, where's my wires? I, I think I have wires, I just didn't put them in the box. Uh, so where were we? Oh yeah, there we go. Actually, wait a second. I don't know how I didn't notice this, but there's a wire coming from this already, so... Maybe I don't have to learn how to solder. But no, there are some other parts in here with wires, so maybe I will have to learn how to do that. So... It... It kind of fits. The teeth on this one don't look as fine as the one in the picture. I hope that's okay. Uh, but... Yeah, this... Yeah, this doesn't fit. I guess I need to look again and make sure I buy the right thing. So I got on the phone directly with Jeff Bezos himself and told him to fix this issue. I was polite, but firm. However, he told me that, sir, this is a Wendy's, so I decided to let him go since he was busy with the Amazon stuff. I then decided to look around for more 15 millimeter lead screws, but the ones I had were the only ones I could find anywhere. I even tried making a Taobao account for like a good 45 minutes, but it would just not let me log in. Not gonna lie, it hasn't been the best start. You know, I, I did measure everything, so these are the right size and everything that they say in the plans, but the thing is that it's shaped a little bit differently than what they used in the in the actual post. So I went to plan B and just tried to hack it, and that actually worked out pretty good. So I just designed these little pieces that kind of make everything level on here, and I think it's still gonna work because the next piece is, Perfect. is able to still sit on here, right? Sometimes you just gotta make things work. So I went ahead and screwed those in, and I think I can move on to the next step. I already went ahead and cut out some of these rods to length, 60 millimeters. And this next part is pretty easy. They just gotta slide in. So things should be going smooth now. You know, I think this part's gonna be pretty easy. Hold on. These don't fit. No, 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 no. I bought the wrong ones. You ever work on a project and nothing goes how you want? I have. You know, I bet some of those other people aren't having this many problems. <laughs> but you can either give up or you can can just keep going. I think I'm gonna keep going. Also now I realize I wasted so much time because someone translated everything in the comments already. I was really struggling with that part. It seems like I did figure pretty much everything out, but that would have saved me some heartache. I, I don't think those comments can uh, help me fix some of my other problems though. But you know what they say, the, the, the real answer is always in the comments or they say something like that. So I did end up placing an order for the right sized bushings, but for some reason I thought it was a good idea to try and super glue the small ones in place so I could keep going. This did not work, not even a little bit, so I moved on to another step with installing the first limit switch, which had me trying out soldering for the first time. So I think I have everything I need. I found, found my wire I was looking for, and I went ahead and skipped a step. I had to install this little limit switch thing, which also isn't the right size, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, but I think it'll still work in this case. At least in their image, they had the black going to pin one, and... White, in their case, going to pin three, but I got red, so I'll do red to pin three. Guess I need to preheat this guy. Well, it's already smoking. Is that, is that normal? I feel like I shouldn't be doing that. For all you soldering people out there, what is this? I've got some stuff right here. In the industry, they call this solder wire. Okay, yeah, it's definitely hot enough. It just, it went through that like butter. So I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing, but Probably should have watched some more videos. Oh, that's that burnt sponge smell. All right. I proceeded to do as I usually do and just sent it. And then, oh, wait a second. I did it. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. I just, I just went for it and it worked. Beginner's luck, probably. But it is a nice feeling. I was so scared of soldering for so long and there's, there's actually a few different projects that involve soldering that I really want to do. And you know, now maybe I'll give it a try. That's solid, that's all in there. Probably inhaling some bad fumes, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> that just makes it more fun, right? No, but seriously, you shouldn't inhale this stuff. I should be wearing a mask. A lot of people I see that solder don't wear a mask, so I don't know. Yeah, and that's because they usually use a fume extractor like this one. Don't worry, I figured that out after this first bit of soldering. That's one thing off the list of things to worry about. And now we've got a new skill. I mean, it's a low level skill, but at least it's a skill and uh, I feel more confident. The next piece is just went on with some screws and since I'm too nice with a screwdriver, this only took a minute, but that made me realize how slow this project's been going. And I feel like, I feel like a lot of this has been taking a while, but you know, you gotta, sometimes you gotta enjoy the process. It's not easy, but sometimes you uh, you just keep on going and you figure things out and it's, it's all gonna work out for you. And I just be yapping, yappa yappa yappa, yap yap, yappity yap yap, yap yap yap. But anyway, I feel like I've been tucking y'all's ear off. Sometimes I get a little yappy. So let me go ahead and put y'all into montage mode while I keep working on this. Hopefully by the time y'all get back, I'll be done with this and we can move on to the software portion. Hey buddy over there, can you, uh, can you hit that montage mode button? talking to me who else is I'm you're the only one in here who else could I be talking hey, about bro, calm down a little bit you're right I'm sorry it's, it's just been a hard project and you know I've been struggling but hey man just keep going you got this thank you I got you man here's montage mode
I started out by cutting out the build plate as best I could and by the time I was done with that, the bigger bushings came in and luckily this time they were the right size. So I was able to slide them into place on the bottom of the build plate and insert the linear rods. This all snapped into place and this was the first time that it really felt like the printer was coming together. Look at this, it slides just like a real printer. I then put in a little screw which, believe it or not, is what the motor uses to move the bed around. It's a pretty clever design. The motor will turn on and since it's touching the screw it'll make the bed slide with it. After that I could put on the magnetic film and I was feeling pretty good, but unfortunately that feeling didn't last too long because the x-axis motor was even more difficult to make work than the first one. Luckily though I had the pieces from that first one that kind of helped, but I had to put in screws in strange places and even did a little bit of plastic welding to make it stay in place. This worked pretty good though, so I could continue on and put on the z-axis pieces. Here you can see how the screw slots into the teeth of the motor so when it turns it'll move everything along the rods. Of course though these darn wrong shaped motors got me again because the nozzle just wouldn't fit. So I busted out the Dremel. I'm starting to think that this tool can fix all my problems. With that out of the way I needed to solder up my other two limit switches and get those in place. Of course the yapping continued. I keep yapping all day I yap 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 and I never stop I'm just a yapper sometimes when I'm working. Just notice my table's kind of wobbly. You might not believe this but if you turn any four-legged table at least a quarter turn It'll stop wobbling. I don't know how it works, but it does. There we go, no more wobble. How, how does it do that? Sorry, as per usual, I'm just stalling so I don't have to finish my, my project. <laughs> I'm gonna keep working. After that, the next part was the nozzle, which melts the filament and makes all the magic happen. After putting screws where they needed to go and putting everything together, I realized I was missing the wiring that actually does the heating. So I ordered that, but continued on to get the nozzle on the printer. And of course, once again, it didn't fit. I really didn't understand this one because I specifically bought an E3D V6 nozzle, which is exactly what the author said, but it was interfering with the Z motor. So I tried sanding down the motor, but I ended up needing to dremel out the side of the nozzle, which wasn't too bad. By then I had the heater cartridge, which makes everything hot, as well as the thermistor, which just reads the temperature. With all that together, I could finally get the nozzle in place. Surprisingly, the extruder didn't give me any problems. You could even say it went perfect. Finally, I just had to put on the boards, and luckily for me, this was just a few screws, which I'm telling you, I'm nice with a screwdriver. But I do struggle with getting screws on the screwdriver. By the way, this isn't sponsored, but these Fantic tools were great throughout this entire project, so if you want to check them out, I'll put a link in the description. But anyway, with the boards in place, I could start wiring things up. First, these shorting caps that are necessary to get the stepper motor drivers to work properly. And then I realized I had to re-solder everything because for some reason I didn't think about using wires with connectors so I could just attach them to the board easily. So I took those ribbon cables off of the motors and got these four wires with the connector in place as I gained another soldering level. I did the same with the three limit switches and I could start rolling again. In the Maker World project they have a wiring diagram which tells you where to put everything, so it made it pretty easy on me. The screw motors go in the order XYZ as you might expect, same for the switches. Then I connected the heating cartridge to the D10 slot on the board as well as the thermistor which tells the printer what temperature the hot end is. And I thought I was ready to put the extruder back on for the 20th time but then I realized I hadn't wired it, so I ended up taking the opportunity to just buy a new one with a built in connector to make it a bit easier. Lastly I wired up the power supply which needed two jumper wires to connect all the terminals together. Well there we go, montage was a success. You know I need to do more montages more often. Every time I do one it seems like I finish what I'm trying to do. No but it was good but now we got to go on to the software part. You do the software portion. The software hey. portion might be even more difficult hey. as long as he just keeps hey, can, on going. Can you pull the narration? I, I got this all right. I'm done. I'm done. You know I appreciated the montage mode help but come on man. I, Eesh. So yeah, hopefully software is a bit easier. This is this is my line of expertise. I'm not much of a hardware guy. It's all open source software. I believe it's called Marlin. Yep, called Marlin. We can download it on the Arduino. Hopefully it's all wired up correctly and everything. But luckily they had a lot of good pictures and information in the post. So I think it I think that part is taken care of. Let me get this installed and we'll see how it goes. Installing the software was pretty easy with Arduino IDE, and it was nice to see the first sign of life on the printer after plugging it into my laptop. There were some configuration things to change, but all the it was neatly documented in the project, so I made those changes and uploaded to the board, and I gotta say, everything in this part of the project went... Oh, wait, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah. Perfect! I couldn't believe I was finally holding my 3D printed 3D printer in my hand, and it was time to print something out. Finally, so after all that, I got the software, I got the wiring, I'm finally ready to connect to this thing called Pronterface, and this is just going to help me debug any problems and manually move the motors and and just kind of see what's going on. So hopefully everything works and <laughs> we'll find out here pretty quick. Yeah, nothing, nothing's working. You know, I don't think it's quite time to get too discouraged because there is a chance I just wired everything wrong. 
which seems a bit unlikely, but it's possible. So I'm gonna flip some connectors around and, and we'll see what happens. You know, if I'm being completely honest, I've thought of so many different ways that I could just kind of cheat the end of this video. Just make it seem like it's working or make it, you know, just, just say, well, nothing worked. You know, just take the easy way out. It's not the way I want this video to go. And it wasn't even that long ago where I had another project that I didn't really know how to do. And now, he's right here. So yeah, it's easy to get down, frustrated, annoyed, but I think when you push through, it ends up being worth it. Ideally, after flipping all those around, everything's gonna work, but if it's not, I'll figure it out. I ended up finally learning how to use a multimeter for the first time in my life, which told me that the motor wires weren't going to the right pins on the board. So I continued to level up my soldering skills and finish fixing all the remaining wiring issues. After that, everything started to come together. I verified that all my switches were working through Pronterface. All my motors were moving just like a real 3D printer. The extruder was spinning so I could load it up. My hot end was heating and it started spitting out some filament. All that was left was to hit print. And I knew exactly what I had to print. I really did it. Might not look like much, but it's a penny. Not a real penny, that's, that's pretty illegal, but I can't believe it. <laughs> it really worked. I 3D printed a 3D printer. This was easily the most difficult thing I've ever worked on, but I learned so much from it. From never soldering, to leveling up my abilities a little bit, to finally learning how to use a multimeter, to just persevering through problem after problem. Now, it's not as nice or as big as some of the other 3D printed printers I've seen, but in the end, I think I finally realized something. You know, I think we all kind of feel like we're not good enough or didn't do good enough and compare ourselves to others. I am good enough.